everyone. Hello and welcome in. Thank you for joining me on this chilly Wednesday night here in Northeast Ohio. Thank God week seven of the NFL season is behind us. We can move on for that, from that weird weekend of games that we just witnessed, uh, starting weird with the Thursday night game against the Broncos and Browns and ending in just undramatic fashion on Monday night between the Saints and the Seahawks. So better days are ahead for the NFL. Uh, hopefully they can uh, put that one uh, to bed and we never have to talk about the week seven at well. You see the Vikings go on a bye week. And then this is what happens. The rest of the league just crumbles and shambles because they don't have the Vikings there to lift them up with the exciting dramatic finishes that we've been experiencing all season uh, with the Minnesota Vikings. So that's my little aside slash intro to this uh, video. So if you're new around here, every Wednesday I upload the weekly NFL Pick'em video. I keep track of the picks. Behind me is the whiteboard. Say hello. It's a nice staple feature uh, for this video series. And using the whiteboard with all of the games listed up on here, you'll be able to follow along. As I make selections, I will be indicating which teams I am picking to win each game using these team pendants. So obviously you can follow along with me. Let me know what your selections are as we head into week eight. So before I begin making picks, let's do a little housekeeping to remind you how I've been doing so far this year. Because the whole point of the series is to keep track and to see how we do at the end of the year if we have a good record or not. So for week seven, the, uh, the games that I picked correctly were the Packers, Titans, Falcons, Patriots, Rams... Cardinals, Saints, the teams I picked incorrectly, unfortunately, were the Broncos, the Panthers, Ravens, Eagles, and the 49ers. So after week seven, which was a very respectable eight and five, that brings me overall on the season to a pretty healthy 69, nice, and 38. So once again, it's a pretty good week. Uh, there were fewer, fewer games to pick from, so that's why the win total is a little bit low, but I'm still happy being above 500. For the week, and uh, I've almost um, actually, I think I've actually, oh, no, I haven't nearly doubled, but uh, the, the overall uh, total is good. It's in a good spot. So let's keep that going. And having said all of that, let's get into making selections for week eight of the NFL season, starting with Thursday night between the Packers and the Cardinals. Devontae Adams has been ruled out. He's on the COVID 19 list, as has been Alan Lazard. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a talking point going forward because I believe Alan Lazard has been un, was unvaccinated, and uh, had he been vaccinated, uh, I think the protocol would have allowed him to play in Thursday night's game. So the point is that Aaron Rodgers is going to be without his best two weapons. So I think we're going to see a heavy dose of Aaron Jones uh, on Thursday night because otherwise he's throwing to Robert Tanyan, according to St. Brown. Um, I don't know if Marcus Valdez Scantlin is going to be available for this game, and even if he is, if he's going to be 100% because he is coming off IR. Maybe Amari Rodgers uh, breaks out, you know, the rookie that they drafted this year. Who knows? But I don't know. I, I think the Cardinals are too good. They're on a roll. I don't foresee them losing their first game on Thursday night football. I'm going to say that the Cardinals at, the, at their home stadium are going to be too much to handle for a depleted offense that surrounds Aaron Rodgers. But I shouldn't do it because... The same way that I tell myself, do not bet against Tom Brady has only screwed you in the past. We all know that Aaron Rodgers is Captain America bullshit, where he could just pull wins out of his ass and will his team to victory. So maybe it happens. It may, this could be one of the more entertaining games of the season. It's just going to be interesting to see how dynamic the offense can be without uh, Devontae Adams and Alan Lazard. All right, moving on. We have the Panthers and the Falcons. Uh, the the Panthers are fraudulent. Sam Darnold was benched last week in former of in favor of former XFL star PJ Walker. I don't see how that helps them, um, but it saves Sam Darnold from some embarrassment. And speaking of saving yourself from embarrassment, the Falcons were able to do that last week as they managed to uh, scrape away a victory against the Miami Dolphins, who fall to one and six on the year. So I'm going to go with the Falcons. They have the I guess the mojo, if you will, or they, they've got a winning streak. I don't know what they have. Um, the Falcons beat the Panthers. Let's just put it that way. Next, we have the Bills coming off the bye week to face the aforementioned Dolphins. Despite the team's poor play and record, Tua has been pretty good these last couple of weeks. He just does. There's just not enough around him. I, I don't know what's happened to Brian Flores in this organization this year, how they've just fallen off the wagon so hard. I'm going to say the Bills are well-rested for this, and they'll be prepared. So I'm going to go with the Bills over the Dolphins. Next, uh, we have the 49ers versus the Chicago Bears. Not really sure how to feel about this one. Uh, this could go either way. The Bears have some pretty interesting wins on their record, but the 49ers are, are a team that just seems like it can't figure themselves out. I don't know when do we start talking about uh, maybe Kyle Shanahan being on the hot seat, considering you know he's 2-4 and four this year. 
and uh, things aren't going well at the quarterback position, whether he has Trey Lance or Jimmy Garoppolo in there. I don't know. I I'm just going to go with the fact that the Bears are a dumpster fire. Matt Nagy needs to be fired. And, uh, you know, there is just nothing uh, nothing on this team that is going to help Justin Fields' development this year. So I'll go with the 49ers to uh, win this one over the Bears. Next, we have the Steelers versus the Browns. The Browns are mightily banged up. I think I mentioned this in the last week, uh, in, the, in the last week's Pick'em video, just how many players they have that are on IR. And I understand that they're going to get some of them back. Um, that running back that they had break out on Thursday Night Football, amazing story. Is it enough to go up against the Steelers in, you know, one of the greatest rivalries in the history of sports? I don't think so. I think the Steelers are good enough uh, to win a game against a very banged up Browns team. And that's going to cause some major dissension amongst fans if the Browns are not able to pull out a victory against their uh, division rivals. Next, we have the Eagles and the Lions. I've been putting off picking the Lions for a number of weeks now. I started out pretty strong thinking they're going to get a win. They're going to get a win. It's going to happen. And I kept predicting it. And then I was like, okay, apparently this isn't happening. So I'm going to back off. Um, you know, last week they played the Rams. There was nothing I could really do uh, to, you know, to project a victory in that one. Um, but I'm going to do it this week. I'm going to get back on the Dan Campbell bandwagon. I'm going to predict the first Lions win of the season against the Philadelphia Eagles team that's just not that good. And uh, I don't think it's Jalen Hurts' fault. I think Jalen Hurts is doing pretty well. Uh, if you have him on fantasy, you're pretty happy about that. Um, but as far as the Eagles go, I just, I, I don't see it this year. And, you know, the Lions are more motivated. They get the home field advantage. You know, if that even really is an advantage up in Ford's field, you'll, somebody will have to inform me on that one. That was a pen that I dropped. Not editing that out. Next, we have the Titans and the Colts. You know, the Colts feel like this weird mirage that I can't figure out. You know, Carson Wentz is playing good football, I guess. I mean, that was an atrocious rainstorm that they had to battle, battle it out with the 49ers last week on Sunday Night Football, so the mistakes are jarringly funny, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you, you kind of understand that, so I don't really know what to make of this team, you know, Jonathan Taylor's great, um, Michael Pittman's good, Carson Wentz is good, I, I don't know how he's good, but he's good somehow, um, so is it real, is it not, I don't know, but for this week, I'm going to pretend that the, it's not real, and that the Titans are just that much more real, because King Derrick Henry has yet to be dethroned, and I think that he's just going to run all over the Colts once again. Next, we have the Bengals and the Jets. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the Bengals are for real. The Jets are not. I don't care who they trade for. They brought in senior citizen Joe Flacco to be their quarterback now that Zach Wilson is going to be on the shelf for a while. That's not going to help anybody. Uh, following that, we have the Rams and the Texans. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, next, uh, we have the uh, Chargers and the Patriots. The Patriots come off a... You know, a very, like, um, what would I call that? That win over the Jets where they they put up 50 points because Bill Belichick hates that organization and he's gonna and he's just going to pour it on them every opportunity that he gets. And the Jets are down bad, so it was the perfect opportunity to really stick it to them. I'm going to say that they're feeling pretty high, uh, you know, high on their own supply after that game. Chargers are coming off the bye week. I'm going to go with the Chargers. I think they're the better team, more talented team, especially with the, uh, the offense that they got. So Chargers for the win over the Patriots. Next, we have the Jaguars versus the Seahawks. We have to have a serious conversation about backup quarterbacks in the NFL because if you're going to have a backup quarterback in this league that you don't trust to throw the football and then when you are forced to play them because of injury, suspension, whatever the case may be, some unforeseen event is going to force you to play the quarterback too that's on your depth chart. Why are we you know, playing this game? You know, I understand there's only so many good quarterbacks in, in the world. I get that. But why are we playing this game with backup quarterbacks that can't run an offense or that you don't bother to teach to run an offense? I, what, what are we doing? Like, like the, the, whole, the whole backup quarterback thing just baffles me. Um, I'm going to go with the Jaguars, long story short. I don't, I don't think I've picked the Jaguars to win a game this year. Other than, did I pick them last week? I did not pick them last week. So I'm going to go with the Jaguars to get another win. And the Seahawks season is just going to get worse. Next, we have the Washington football team versus the Denver Broncos. This is the one game that I chalked up to a coin flip. I really don't know what to expect from either of these groups. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, I don't know. I think Vic Fangio is probably pretty close to getting fired. And really, I think the biggest mistake that they made was starting Teddy Bridgewater over Drew Locke because Drew Locke has the better arm. That's just my opinion. You might disagree with that. But either way, I'm going to give the win to the Washington football team. 
Uh, release all the emails, please. Next, we have the Bucks versus the Saints. Uh, get Jameis Winston some real receivers, please. I, and the funny thing is that they just traded for Mark Ingram. Not that he needed another running back to hand off to. Uh, this team badly needs Michael Thomas back. They badly, probably really badly, miss Emmanuel Sanders. I don't know. I, I think that there's something to be said about the wide receiver group uh, for this team the year after Drew Brees retires. It's kind of bizarre how that, that just happened uh, you know, in, in sync with each other. I don't know. Either way, you know, uh, Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, uh, they look unbeatable right now. Uh, my motto or slogan is to, you know, don't bet against Tom Brady because it's going to just bite you in the ass anyway. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with the Bucks to beat the Saints. We arrive at the Sunday night football game, the game that you've all been waiting for, the Cowboys versus the Vikings. I'm going to be optimistic once again. You know, they've rattled off two wins in a row. They dug themselves out of an 0-2 hole to start the season. The Vikings have the home field advantage. They're coming off the bye week. Dak Prescott, I don't know what the status of his health is. I assume that he's going to be, you know, pretty close to 100%, and he's going to give it his all, and he's going to throw for 400 yards, whatever. You know, the Vikings' defense hasn't played too bad. Um, they've got a lot of sacks this year. I think that they're one of the best uh, teams when it comes to sack total so far this season. Um, Dalvin Cook should be rested up and healthy to run all over this defense. It's going to come down to can they stop Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard uh, with the run defense, uh, minus uh, Michael Pierce and Cam Bashad Breland and Cam Dantzler, you know, live up to the expectations that they are good enough to fill in for an injured Patrick Peterson against this dynamic offensive threat that is Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, etc. I don't know. I'm just going to say that they do it. I'm going to say that they do it. Kirk Cousins is playing lights out this year. Home field advantage, good defense, Daniil Hunter. You know, I'm, I'm going to say that the, the Vikings are legit on Halloween night in prime time with a win over a very good Cowboys team. Because fans keep telling me that this is a really good Vikings team. Really good Vikings team should be able to beat a really good Cowboys team. That's what I'm chalking it up to. Last but not least, we have the Chiefs versus the Giants on Monday Night Football. Um, I don't know what has happened to the Chiefs this year. My guess is that everything is fine. It's just that Patrick Mahomes is trying too hard. Uh, falling into the trap that uh, his abilities are better than he thinks that they are, and he's just trying to, you know, put the team on his shoulders, you know, more egregiously than we've ever seen anyone do before. And I, I think the offense, like you know, opposing defenses haven't figured out this offense. It's just that it's, it, it's just not working anymore. They they need to start making some schematic changes. It also doesn't help that the defense is just hot garbage. That is a, another big problem. And then we're coming off a week where the Giants actually destroyed the Panthers. I think that what was the final of that game was like 20 something to 5. Just oh, 20 it was 25 to 3 if I remember correctly. So, you know, the Panthers are frauds. Giants aren't very good. You know, they're pretty banged up in their own right, you know, Kenny Galladay, Saquon Barkley, etc. I don't know. I'm going to say that the Chiefs don't lose to the Giants at home. Just just a hunch. Just, just they'll figure it out for this one week, and then we'll go from there and see what happens. All right, so that's going to do it. Those are my week eight selections. Head-to-head, -head, remember this is not points. This is not against the spread. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That's going to do it for me for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.